what you're seeing is the first thing that I ever rendered in Blender. It's a pretty simple render, nothing too special about it. Lighting could be better, but overall it was just a test to see what I could do. And I ultimately used these tests and created my own custom icon for Jurassic World Evolution. But the first thing that I ever rendered properly as a full scene was this recreation of the Tyrannosaurus breakout from Jurassic Park. Now, just to refresh your memory on one of the most iconic scenes in film... Boy, no, I hate being right all the time. Suffice to say that this isn't a perfect recreation on my part. T-Rex is too far away, the angle is a bit different, the colors are a bit oversaturated, there's a light on that really shouldn't be on given that the power is out, and there's obviously the missing Ford Explorers. Now, I don't say all this because I hate the project, I'm proud of it for the time, but as I grew as a person, making some things that are good, some things that are less good, and continuing to try and experiment with Blender, I'd like to think that I'd gotten a bit better with it, and I've even recreated the breakout scene a few times. Which leads us to today's video, where I find out if I can recreate this scene more faithfully than my first ever project. We've officially reached the unscripted segment of this video, so like everything, it starts out with finding good reference image. Now, I searched for a little while trying to find a 4K version of the scene, but it's a film from 1993, and YouTube compresses things to high hell. So I found a pretty decently sized image and popped everything into Blender. I've been working on this T-Rex uh, rig and everything for a little while now. Obviously it was created by Frontier, but I've had to modify it to be a little easier to work with on my end so I'm not clicking every individual bone that I don't want. There's still a bit of that, but nevertheless, organizing the assets is the first thing that I had to do. Well, I clicked every possible fence that wasn't the one that I tried to open. So, going into your files, it's good to know what you need and what you don't need. I got rid of the little compy fence there, just because I it wasn't in the original scene. I don't think it was necessary to have it here. Now it's all about bringing everything to where it should be in the scene. If the fences are too close, then they look too big. If they're too far away, then they look too small. So it's all about sort of matching the scale to the best of my abilities, finding exactly where the breaking points are, and moving everything accordingly. So here you can see me trying to do that, and trying to get everything to match in terms of its relation to the original scene. Now I'm altering the rotation so that it matches a little better, as when the T-Rex breaks out, the fence starts to fall over, and it bends in those ways. I try my best to make posing a little easier by rotating around. Now here I go with posing the entire uh, the entire animal. Uh, I have um, done the inverse kinematics on the feet for the T-Rex, which was the m most difficult part of this entire process. Um, but that's something that I did way off camera for a long while. A lot of it's just trying to get the pose right. The Jurassic World Evolution T-Rex is significantly smaller than the Jurassic Park one. Well, smaller as in, it's a lot skinnier, it's a lot less massive. Um, and it's also smaller in terms of overall size. Um, I converted it to be a little bigger, and it came out to 1.2 uh, times the size of the Jurassic World Evolution version. Here I go with making the world as um, accurate as I can to the scene, trying to match the lighting to the best of my abilities. Now, adding the rain and making the T-Rex look wet was a rather tedious process. Initially, I thought it would be as easy as just throwing the clear coat on it, but the clear coat didn't quite do it, so I had to go into the specular map area and try and mess with it. But in doing so, that messed up the eye and it didn't make the eye glow, so instead I'm adding an emission map so that the eye can glow, the correct, can glow a little bit, because it does glow a little bit in the film. Um, adding a little bit there, and back to setting everything up. I noticed that these cables aren't connected, so I have to connect them, so I edit the mesh and 
extend it all out a little bit. Adding the mist is the most taxing part on the computer, and it is easily the most out of my league section. Usually with Blender, I work in Eevee, because Eevee is something that is really easy to use, it demands very little, and all that. But in Eevee, you don't get mist. Cycles, you get mist. Here I am modeling a raindrop. Um, <laughs> the raindrop was uh, surprisingly very simple, and I briefly forgot how to um, how to model, or not how to model, how to set up the emitter so that the raindrops would actually fall from it. So here I am fiddling about. I'm going to grab my phone from downstairs and uh, checking an old YouTube tutorial that I used for the uh, last time I did this project. I'm messing with the raindrops a little bit because they're not as um, as much as they need to be. They're a little too invisible for my uh, for my taste. Just editing everything to get everything in as good a position as I can get it. Um, and there we go. Now, you may notice that there's no floor. That's because I wanted to have a holdout and a shadow catcher. Because I was thinking, oh, I'll just composite things in. I'll have this be an alpha, and then I'll put it over a clean plate. But upon realizing that, hmm, I don't really, uh, I didn't do that on the last one, why would I do it for this one? I decided to recreate the entire uh, area in Blender. So I'm adding the electronic track right now. I'm going to make it much more metallic because as it is, it's pretty matte um, on its own. Adding a, I'm adding the pavement now, so just a large plane with some white noise attached to the bump map. And then I believe that I threw some clear coat on it uh, to make it seem like it was more wet. Now adding some uh, mountains in the background. Adding mountains in the background is a pretty easy way to make it seem like your scene is sort of on the actual island. So just simply throwing them back there, making them all black so that there's an actual background there. Getting some trees from Jurassic World Evolution was also a pretty, um, not a very tedious task. The most tedious part is finding the trees that I liked, scaling them to the right size, and making sure that they, they fit in the scene. Um, most of the trees that I used for this were the tropical trees, but I also went with the fern trees and the um, ginkgo trees. I wanted to put a fern up front because I was dreading the section with the cars. The cars took me an hour just to set up one of them, but then I just duplicated it and rotated it and all that to get it fitting in the right spot. Doing some adjustment with the mountains so that they can actually peer over the trees. Uh, here we go with importing the ginkgo trees because I feel like it's important to have a little bit of um, paleontological parts in the um, in the actual enclosure. Whether or not it was in the movie is an entirely different story. So I'm checking all the renders, or I'm checking the render to see how it looks so far, and the more I look at it, the more that it's clearly missing something. So um, I try adding light to the background so you can see a little clearer, but even the mist is too bright. Everything's a little too bright. Um, but, so I'm adding more trees to fill in that background more because there's a lot of negative space. Um, and that's a consequence of me being too afraid to throw in the cars. Here I'm darkening out everything, adding some more color in there. It's more color than the original film, but when Blender exports it, it desaturates a lot of color to, um, to make everything seem like it's more um, filmic. So I'm adding some clear coat to the fences now to make it seem like they've been rained on and readjusting the T-Rex's eye. I tried widening it open to make it seem like it was in a much more state of shock or try and emulate how big the eye seems in the original film. Um, and now I've done the dreaded uh, importing of the car assets, which lagged my computer to hell. So I had to close all the um, foliage scenes. And here we go with <laughs> putting the car together which took me 51 minutes just to get all the pieces of the car because how it works is when you export the car with uh, Cobra tools the car is in pieces as you're gonna see here everything is in pieces they're all organized very well um, and it's not a very difficult process of putting them all back together 
the difficult part is just having the patience to select everything and then go back and forth and then my recording software um, was overlaid over it which made life a little difficult just a lot of like small tedious things but overall it turned out really nice and these models are amazing so frontier does an amazing job with modeling things based off the films um, and it's all very well organized and i understand why they um why they have to split it up like this because there's damage variants of each one so that you can um, if a dinosaur attacks your, your uh, ford explorer in the game it can actually break and you have different pieces fall off which you can't really have if the entire thing is one model like the dinosaurs are so here we go with continuing to um, put the car together this will this will last a while trust me i put everything on backwards for a little bit it was uh, it was, it, well, I never want to relive that experience again. Um, but I think that just the inclusion of those um, explorers really elevates it to a level that I couldn't really have prior to, um, to adding them in because it just, it makes everything have that much more value. Adding the license plate in, um, just a lot of small details that need to be put into um, uh, getting everything where it needs to be to make this the best it can be. Now, a nifty little thing about the model is that the back right hand side doesn't fit. So you can see that I'm putting in the side bit and it's not fitting. So I tried to, to warp it to make it bigger. It still doesn't fit. Almost nothing I do makes it fit um, where it needs to be. This may be something I did wrong, but um, I noticed that no matter what happens, it never fits in the spot that it's supposed to go. Which I think is um, an interesting little quirk, because in the game it all works fine. It's just here, it's slightly off, and it's only in the back of the right hand side. It's very peculiar. And the left side, perfectly fine. So uh, I think it may have been my fault, maybe I accidentally rotated something um, that shouldn't have been rotated, or something along those lines. So a lot of this is me trying to fix that back right hand side to make everything fit to the best of my abilities. And lots of navigating menus. Uh, so here we go. We're almost at the end of just the car. And I'm making you guys sit through this just because I had to do this for 10 times as long as you'll have to watch it. And oh my god, it was very regrettable. <laughs> but in the end, it all, it makes it look that much more clean it makes it look that much more like the film which is ultimately the end goal of this project was to recreate the first thing with all the knowledge that i have gained in my my time learning blender to create the scene much more accurately than the first time around eventually i do just say fuck it and uh <laughs> start deleting parts of the uh of the chassis so that the so that the back right hand side fits on which, you know, I'm not, not horribly proud of that, but um, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Yeah, here we go. Just deleting parts. <laughs> um, Alright, and nearing the home stretch on the car, the Ford Explorer, and it looks pretty great. Adding some materials onto the tires and the chassis just so that it doesn't look white. Um, adding glass materials onto the glass parts. For the dark glass, I'm adding a dark glass material. And just like that, the car is done. I do fumble around with um, importing it into the actual scene, but it gets there, and just like that, it's all ready to go. So now it's just a matter of placing it where it needs to be. Initially, I try to go with the topography of the scene that I have made, but in doing so, it makes the cars really far away and too small, so I try to more accurately emulate the scene, so move the rails up, rotate them so that it makes a little more sense, um, ignore the fact that it's going away from the exhibit, but that way it gets things a lot more close to where they need to be. Now adding spotlights to uh, emulate the, the sort of god rays that you get when you shine a light through mist, so um, I'm adding these spotlights in um, to be acting like the headlights so that it lights up the scene. And adds that little bit of dynamic lighting that you need to um, to really make the scene work as a um, as an entire piece. Adjusting the eyes because 
they were way too wide open and it, it didn't quite fit right. Now we, we check it and just like that, it's done. So as you can see, it's not perfect. There are parts of it that I wish I did a little differently. I adjusted the camera, which made it all a little too far away, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. If you'd like to see more, uh, subscribe, and if this video gets to 100 likes, I will animate the entire sequence, or at least this shot. Um, but thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.